Chad here. And we are back for part two of our uh, video uh, on the uh, objection uh, and misconception to Christianity. And the topic of the video is Jesus being the only way to God. Um, Jesus being the only way to salvation. And um, in our previous video, we talked about the nature of truth. Mm. Um, and so um, the importance of be having the object of what we believe to be true, um, being, that being more important than uh, us saying, this is what we believe and we believe it really strongly. Well, <laughs> that thing that we believe, is it true? Like right. I can believe that, you know, I'm the most beautiful woman in the world, you know, like that's not really true. It is true. Oh, thanks, Bill. <laughs> that is a true statement right there. That's a true truth claim. <laughs> you know, so I mean that that could be my own strong feeling, but is it true for everybody? You know, no, not for you know every person out there. You know what I mean? Um, mm. So basically, you know, you know the point that I'm trying to get to. Right. Um, Meaning, the sincerity of your belief doesn't yes. necessarily point to the truth of it. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter how hard you believe something if it's not true. Yeah. 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 Kind of, yeah. yeah, and then speaking of the truth, um, you know, Jesus himself said in John fourteen six that he said, I am the, the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's really no other, I guess, you know, religious leader in history that has ever said that. And, you know, let alone... This is one of the things, uh, let alone the virgin birth of Jesus, let alone him claiming to be God, let alone him dying on a cross and resurrecting. I mean, we're going to get into that more mm -hmm. deeply. Uh, we're going to basically share with you guys um, the evidence that leads to our belief that this is that Christianity is the one true faith. Yeah. Um, and, and before we do that, uh, let's not shy away from these very stark Bible verses that say that uh, Jesus is exclusively uh, the way. Um, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, mm -hmm. uh, the Apostle Peter uh, is preaching in the early church. He says, mm -hmm. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very black and white. Um, yeah. and, and obviously we're using the Bible, um, we're using verses from the Bible that we believe gives us our evidence mm -hmm. um, of the truth because uh, first of all the Bible is a the Holy Bible is a historical book um, yeah. you know it's all got all kinds of styles of writing and stuff there's letters there's um, yeah. you know a lot of allegory and stuff like that but the New Testament as as an example yes. um, contains more or has more original manuscripts uh, than any other ancient document so if we are to discount the New Testament, we would have to discount all of the other ancient uh, documents out there because out of out of all of the documents uh, from those ancient times, uh, the New Testament has the most. Um, and I want to say Lee Strobel, um, one of the journalists who were was originally atheist, um, investigate investigated into this, and um, it's just a, a known fact um, in the literary world that the New Testament has. Uh, more original manuscripts than, than any other um, mm -hmm. ancient document. Yes. So it's a it's as historical historically reliable document as any yes. uh, other document that it, we, we would it's find. It's based on you know historical evidence and eyewitness accounts. Okay. So um, basically, mm -hmm. what it is is that we believe the Holy Bible to be true, and not only that, the object of our faith, which is Jesus Christ, affirms. That the scriptures are true, that it is the word of God. Um, you know, of course, it was penned by men, but you know, God is supernatural. He can, you know, inspire these men to write mm -hmm. His word, um, and He He uses people to, you know, bring the message across. I mean, I mean, that's yeah. essentially who Jesus is. Is Jesus is God incarnate, um, who came to the world to give us a glimpse of God. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, so, so I think right now what we're going to do in this video is uh, just go down the list of attributes, um, these sort of these superlative sort of um, defining attributes of Jesus that make him the only possible candidate yes. uh, for our salvation, um, for our reconciliation with God. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there's some fundamental uh, ground sort of rules or 
basic uh, uh, things that we should state before we even start, mm -hmm. which is that um, our belief is is that um, through the Bible we read that man is uh, sinful and that we have this intrinsic need for God um, in terms of our salvation. Um, because we believe in a God that is holy and just, um, any sin that we commit against that kind of holy, perfect God uh, must be punished in a, in a perfectly fair system. Um, so why, because the, the necessity of Jesus or the necessity of religion is because we are being saved from something. And I think this is one of the, those fundamental things that, that dif, um, distinguish Christianity versus other world religions is that other world religions want to say that man is essentially good enough that we can earn our way to salvation mm -hmm. through works. Whereas Christianity, it's distinctly different. Um, yes. so, so before we go straight into the um, person of Jesus, um, there's a, a couple verses that I think are really important to set the foundation, which mm -hmm. one of them being um, Ephesians chapter 2. So uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Um, this is a distinguishing factor um, between Christianity and the other world religions. Mm -hmm. The other world religions um, being based uh, on the works, the good works of man, of, right. of, uh, that we can somehow attain our own salvation mm -hmm. through our efforts. Right, and that's such a huge kind of unique quality of Christianity. It's yeah. different from any other religion in the world because of that, that we we have a God that offers forgiveness um, and justice, if not here in this life, then, you know, afterwards, you know. Um, yeah, so basically, um, that one of the biggest differences being that Jesus um, is distinctly the only way to our salvation versus the other world religions which say we can work our way there. Yes. So I think now we yes. can... And, and Christianity says that our sins that are, our sins against God, which everybody has committed, in Romans it says all have fallen short of the glory of God. Like, it's kind of like when you go to a courtroom um, mm -hmm. and you've committed these sins mm -hmm. and, you, and, and in front of a judge in the courtroom, um, you say, well, well God, I mean, you say to the judge, I'm really sorry, and I'll try to do better next time. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not going to take away the, the, the wrong that you've done. Mm -hmm. The wrong that you've done is there. And no matter how much you apologize or say that you're going to try to be a better person next time and that you're mm -hmm. really sorry, that cannot be just ignored by the judge. The mm -hmm. judge has to punish you. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm saying is that we've already committed these sins against a, a God, a holy and righteous and just God, that we can't possibly be in His presence and spend eternity with Him in our current state. Right. Um, so that's why God offered a way. So it's like being in a human courtroom where someone that you don't know comes in and He pays your fine that the judge mm -hmm. has imposed on you. Someone that you don't know loves you so much and said, I'm, you know, I'm going to pay for this person's penalty so that mm. they can be let go. And right. God offers that to us through Jesus Christ. Um, and so um, my point in saying that yeah, we're, we're basically is that, we're, highlighting is that, that we're guilty. Character. We're guilty okay. before God and there's mm. no amount of good things that we can do to earn His merit. There's, mm. no, there's nothing that we can do. We're, we're, even our good works is like filthy rags to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, no matter how much charity work I do, no matter how much I want to save the whales, I want to find a cure for breast cancer and I'm involved in all these charities, it's, it's not going to take away the sins that I've already committed in front of a holy God. Mm -hmm. um, and so no matter that's how, how much, Christianity is yeah. different in that Jesus Christ, who's, who is Lord, has basically taken the wrath of God that should be upon us Mm -hmm. um, he's taken it upon himself by dying on the cross in, you know, as innocent as he was. He died so that we didn't have to pay that penalty. We didn't have to, basically our penalty is hell. Mm -hmm. We should be, be struck dead by God the way we are in our mm -hmm. broken and fallen state. Okay, so 
um, this is one of the unique things about uh, Christianity is that we can't earn our way. So not of our own goodness that are we reconciled back to God, not of our own good works, but because Jesus did the work for us. Mm. Jesus' work on the cross is what reconciles us back to God. Right. And there's no other world religion that offers that forgiveness, that kind of grace, and that kind of mercy. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, that's 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 uh, one of the distinguishing factors. So, um, let's go ahead and read this verse here that that basically you just pretty much summarized. Mm -hmm. But uh, Apostle Paul in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, um, he talks about this gospel which by which you are saved. Um, it says, for what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Meaning that our salvation is based solely on the work of Jesus. Right. Um, and Jesus, if, if, if it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't be saved. Yes. So um, by claiming that Jesus is the only way, it's it's just it's just obvious to us, mm -hmm. but people uh, want to say that's so arrogant of mm -hmm. you to think that Jesus can be the yes. only way. Why does Jesus have to be the only way? How mm -hmm. come we can't you know you know bow to Buddha or or you know learn Buddhism or or Muhammad, uh, Muhammad or Vishnu or, or the New Age or yeah these other ways that we can yes. work our way to God or mm -hmm. or just kind of will our way to God. Well, it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. um, with the view of God that we have, yes. which is a perfectly holy God. Yes. Um, so, so we have to look at Jesus now. You yeah. know, who is this Jesus and why does he qualify to be Savior? Right. Well, one of the things is that um, Jesus, was his birth was a miraculous and supernatural event by God. The virgin he birth. He was given birth by a young girl, Mary, um, and she had never had sex with a man. She was favored by God and by the power of the Holy Spirit conceived mm -hmm. Jesus. Right. So that's, I mean, that's logically impossible. That's, and, and no other religious leader in the history of the world can mm -hmm. say that they have, they were, you know, had a virgin birth. Right. You know, um, so that's just incredible by itself, meaning that he was fully God and fully man. Man in the sense that he was born of a virgin, of a human woman. And then fully God in the sense that the second half of that DNA is is God Almighty, is fa God, you know Father God. Okay, mm -hmm. so He is fully God and fully man. And that's, right. that's you know a lot of people have a problem with that. I know I know Jehovah Jehovah's Witnesses have a major problem with that. Uh, um, they don't believe that at all. Um, they don't believe in. God being three in one. Um, so, in terms of our scripture right. support for why, right. how Jesus was uh, fully God and fully man, yes. uh, John chapter one mm -hmm. is uh, the the famous uh, chapter that talks about Jesus becoming uh, God, becoming flesh. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Then we jump to verse 14. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. And then, and then verse 18 is perhaps the most clear mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. proof that Jesus was God. Mm -hmm. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is Himself God and mm -hmm. is in closest relationship with the Father has made Him known. Yes. You can't get any more clear yeah, than and that. And that's, that's that Jesus', Jesus was disciple, God. you know, talking. Mm -hmm. This is John in the book of John right. um, saying that Jesus is God. And of course, Jesus throughout the Bible in the New Testament says that he is God. He makes that claim. Right. Now, so, why is it important that um, Jesus was fully God and fully man? Mm -hmm. Well, um, when we think of uh, somebody who can uh, be that ambassador for us, the one. Mm -hmm sort of like that final priest who can uh, make atonement for our sins. Mm -hmm. um, somebody who is a, a sinner himself cannot do that because he has to pay for his own sins. Mm -hmm. So Jesus being um, fully God and also sinless, and mm -hmm. actually we're going to get into that too, mm -hmm. his sinlessness and his total righteousness, mm -hmm. um, had, he had to uh, 
fulfill all of these different qualities. Fully God, um, so that he could uh, accomplish that kind of uh, right. infinite work, yes. so it were, like to, yes. to forgive us. To and, offer that eternal salvation. And fully man to mm -hmm. be our ambassador, to be our representative. Right. If he wasn't man, then he was not is not qualified in, in a sense to, to take our to, to uh, suffer the consequences of our sin mm. um, there's plenty of proof in the Bible that Jesus was fully man I mean he was first of all he was born of a human of, of Mary mm -hmm. so um, you know, Jesus was a human being um, the word became flesh it says um, in John mm. chapter 4 verse 6 it talks about how Jesus uh, was tired um, John nineteen twenty eight talks about how Jesus uh, was thirsty, um, how he was hungry in Matthew four two, um, again how he became physically weak in Matthew four eleven. I mean, the, yes. there's there's plenty of um, Re plenty of references, references in the Bible to say to that he that was a human being. He was a human, but being, also right. plenty of references in the Bible to show that he is God, in mm -hmm. the sense that he performed incredible miracles. Um, yeah. Raising the dead, you know, letting the allowing the blind to see, healing the sick. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, all kinds of now, things. And then also, he not only um, raised Lazarus from the dead in that mirac in, in that miracle, but he he raised himself from yes. the dead. So th I mean, there's nobody ever in history that can claim that they raised mm -hmm. themselves from the dead. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, and and not only that. Um, um, so basically, we were talking about the validity of the Holy Bible. Um, Jesus was also, the coming of his, him, of who he, he is, he was prophesied in the Old Testament mm -hmm. hundreds of times. The coming of the Messiah, he's coming. It says in the Old Testament where he would be born, mm -hmm. that he would be crucified, that he would be the Son of God, that he would be the Messiah, that... You know, he would raise again. I mean, he that he was that he would sit at the right hand of God. I mean, over and over and over again, he is prophesied in the Old Testament that he is coming, mm -hmm. and those prophecies were fulfilled. And then in the New Testament, it's it's about Jesus' life. Mm -hmm. So the Old Testament points to Jesus coming. The New Testament is about Jesus and his life. Right. Okay. So let so, yeah, and so let's talk about uh, um. Let's actually talk about his total righteousness yes. or perfect obedience. Um, because of Jesus' obedience, not only did we gain uh, forgiveness for our sins, but we were also uh, credited his righteousness in, in mm -hmm. status. Uh, even though we sin, uh, we, we will sin until we are fully sanctified in heaven. But Jesus' perfect obedience um, is credited to us as righteousness. Um, as it says here in Romans 5, uh, 18 and 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Um, this verse kind of talks about how not only did Jesus forgive our sins and make us uh, clean from uh, all of the, the dirty deeds that we committed, He also made us perfectly clean in God's sight, mm. um, in status, um, yeah. And there's, there's no one else and there's no other faith system that talks about this mm. kind of radical change in our state. Mm. Um, all of the other faith systems talk about how we have to continue to work our way to become better. Mm -hmm. um, is, this, is, this, is, this, is this just a, a pessimistic view that we have as Christians? Or is it the truth that we are just, uh, we, we are sinful? beings and you know is it just wishful thinking to know to think that we can be good another thing that you know another aspect of Jesus that qualifies him as being the only savior was his sinlessness mm -hmm. um, and total righteousness as a human there's no other human being that was completely sinless Yes. And perfect the way Jesus was yes. um, second Corinthians uh, chapter 5 mm -hmm. verse 21 uh, God, God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. So there again, we talk, we see how because Jesus um, was perfectly yes. obedient, 
that righteousness was uh, credited to yes. us as well. Yeah. Um, also, First Peter chapter two, yeah. verse twenty-two. Yes. Uh, he who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in yeah. his mouth. Yes, That's and, what and being sinless essentially means that you know you are God. I mean, God is holy, so being sinless. Is, yeah, is if you think about it, no human being can no be human being sinless. Can be sinless. Like there's nobody in human history that can say that they yes. never, uh, they never sinned. Exactly, <laughs> and but Jesus was sinless. So right. um, again, you know, this pointing to his his deity. Right. Um, the other um, aspect of um, mm -hmm. Jesus being the only uh, savior, and we touched upon this a little bit, was that. His death was uh, a substitutionary, right. uh, meaning that um, his no other religion basically has a substitutionary um, atoning death because uh, nobody is qualified to do that. Right. I mean, there is no other man or any no other being in in the universe that mm -hmm. qualifies to be that substitution for us to pay right. that penalty that we deserve for right. our sins. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus. Can do that right. because he was sinless right. um, and he lived a perfect life. Yes. Um, and you and Ephesians, Isaiah, um, yeah. Well, Ephesians chapter two talks about that. Mm -hmm. you know, For it is by grace we have been saved, right? Um, not not through our works, right? And then Isaiah mm -hmm. fifty three, um, which is even actually more powerful because it's a pro prophetic word about what Jesus would accomplish mm -hmm. on the cross. Uh, it says surely and, and Isaiah 53 mm -hmm. being a book in the Old Testament Isaiah mm -hmm. being a prophet of God before right. Jesus was even born right and Isaiah giving this prophecy of the coming Messiah who is Jesus Christ right surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just talking about that um, God placing all his wrath uh, mm -hmm. in, in the person of Jesus, who was the, the sinless Lamb of God. Right. Um, you know, Not so, only that, the final crowning attribute, yeah. uh, quality of, of Jesus is the resurrection, his, his resurrection, resurrection from the dead. Why is it so important? Because uh, the basis being that death is the penalty for sin. So yes. if and, Jesus and it says was, in the Bible, the yes. wages of sin is death. Yes, the wages of sin is death, meaning yes. that's the penalty for our sin. Yes. Is death is the punishment. Mm -hmm. Well, if Jesus died... And he's still dead, and he didn't raise from the dead. That means that Jesus is still paying for mm -hmm. our sin, mm -hmm. and he didn't. He hasn't fully accomplished it. He's yes. still paying now mm -hmm. if he's dead in the mm -hmm. in the grave. Right. But he is not. He is raised from the dead, yes. and he has vic victored over death yeah, and over the he penalty. He conquered death. Yes. He conquered sin by raising right. himself from the dead. Now he's a living, you know, right. God. He's and living. He's alive. Buddha's not alive. Muhammad <laughs> is not alive. Yeah. You know. Confucius. Yeah. Confucius <laughs> is not alive. So. Right. Um, and apostle, again, apostle Paul talks about, you know, the the uh, futility of, a faith that, doesn't acknowledge Jesus's resurrection. Yes. So if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, our faith is, means nothing. It's it's all a sham. Right. <laughs> it's all a lie. I mean. So um, it says uh, yeah. if. Yeah. And also the disciples, after Jesus died, there mm -hmm. was a great um, sense of grief that came over them because mm -hmm. they thought he was the Messiah that was going to restore the nation mm -hmm. of Israel um, and take them away from, you know, other rulers, like, you know, at the time mm -hmm. was Rome. They thought he was going to be a great king, a great warrior, uh, like David, like a David mm -hmm. type. Um, but he is, Jesus is the great king, but not in the way that they thought he would be. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and and going back to the importance of the resurrection. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm losing my train of okay. thought right now. So the the importance of the resurrection, um, Apostle Paul highlights in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, um, verse fourteen. If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your yes. faith. Yes. Oh, so that's what I was trying to. I lost mm -hmm. my train of thought. Was that the disciples were just kind of like, 
okay, well, that's it. And they went back to their own lives after Jesus died. There was a great sense of disappointment. Mm -hmm. um, but this is where, G when Jesus resurrected and appeared to them, that's when everything, everything changed. Everything radically transformed. Radically changed. They because became the martyrs they that they, that saw they became. Yeah. their Lord in his bodily flesh, yeah. raised from the dead three days later, and that completely changed their lives. Yeah. So they they were they became those martyrs. They were killed for preaching um, the gospel, which is Jesus. Jesus is and the gospel. His resurrection. Yeah. Right. So, I mean. Yeah. And why would they do that for a lie? Why would people, right. um, you know, conspire and say let's let's pretend Jesus rose from the dead yeah. and let's just spread this yes. this rumor or this this fa false lie that. Mm you know, that Jesus raised from the right. dead and, and, and then be killed where, for it. Yeah. Why, why would they do that? That was, right? the, that was Christianity, basically. Right. That was the beginning of our, the Christian faith. Yeah, was, and it just kind of exploded from was that. that. Was the resurrection. Right. Um, that is the gospel message. Not only that Jesus died for our sins and he took away the sins of the world with yeah. his death, but that he raised from the dead. This is the cr critical thing that yes. maybe a lot of times we forget and we focus more on the death of Jesus. Right. But his resurrection is really the victory mm -hmm. over our sin and over yes. our death. Um, right here, again, mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Mm -hmm. Right there, if we extrapolate that and, and talk about the other world religions who don't believe in a savior who rose from the dead mm -hmm. there there this verse clearly says you are still in your sins yes so it's a sad reality and this is the sad truth that we believe that these other world religions um, the, the the adherents or the followers of these other world religions are sadly yes. still in their sins yes um, and 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 you know it's because we believe the Bible is true Jesus even warned of this happening mm -hmm. false yes. doctrine false religion um, Right. false prophets coming and perverting the gospel um that's yeah. why there's so many different religions teaching different things is that yeah you know that's what atheism is that's what any ism is buddhism hinduism catholicism that it's like all of those false religions mm. are there to try to make it's a it's a way to suit yourself to what you want to believe it and, makes and, you comfortable. It fits with your idea of who God is. Right. You know. And we're prone to that um, as human beings. We're prone to these teachings and uh, philosophies uh, that just kind of suck us in. Even from the very beginning, early church, in Galatians chapter one, Apostle Paul talks about mm -hmm. the danger of these other gospels that yes. they talk about. Um, like, you know, in, in verse uh, 6 of Galatians 1, Apostle Paul says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Mm -hmm. um, evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of yes. Christ. So from from the very beginning, um, there, were, there were these uh, false teachings that kind of crept into yes. uh, the, the church. And, and even before, you know, Jesus came... There, there was idolatry, um, false gods. You know, his God's people, Israel, were always being led astray by their current surroundings and the cultures that they were around, um, and God constantly asking them to obey Him and and praise Him and only worship Him. Um, so you know, this whole idea of you know false gods, it's been around even before the time of Jesus. So. Um, you know it's unfortunate you know and it's 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 a really deep issue that people need to find out for themselves you know we need to seek out the truth you know what's real and what's counterfeit you, you know counterfeit mm -hmm. what is a counterfeit it looks exactly like the real thing um, mm -hmm. but it's not you know yeah. and so we can easily get deceived um, Sometimes we want to just believe something because it suits our our own, you know, idea about who God is. Um, but there's a danger in that, and the danger is is that we're gonna not we're not gonna spend eternity with God. Mm -hmm. So that's the danger. It's it's about our eternal salvation, where we're going to spend eternity. It's it's so so important, and I know it's it seems far away. Like you know, we like to think that. 
we're going to live for a very long time, but the truth is, the statistic is, this stark reality is that we're all going to die. We don't know when, but right. it's going to happen. Um, and it's like an important thing to think about. Yeah. Yeah. So. So our, our uh, I guess our, uh, uh, how do you say this? Our humble request or our, admi not an admonition, but I guess. We, we, I mean, basically, we challenge. Yeah. we challenge you. We challenge you, we to, challenge you to search seek, the truth. Seek it um, out, um, investigate it. Yeah, and because it's important, you know. Yeah, right. God gave us the gift of free will. So, you know, it's up to you to make that important choice in your life. You know, um, I, I truly believe that our purpose here in life is to choose God, is to come here because, you know, we... Are sinful beings and we fall short um, and we're far away from God and and we have to make that conscious decision mm -hmm. you know to try to find out who he is to find the truth you know and so yeah I, you know I hope you guys uh, anyone out there who's listening to this video who's searching and seeking for the truth I hope you found this video helpful um, you know we've presented you with what is the truth Mm -hmm. And it's not just our opinion, you know, it's not just a feeling that we have. It's based on our own investigation of our Christian faith, which we believe is based on, you know, facts and history and evidence. So Yeah, and I think what we'll do too is uh, at the bottom of this video, um, we'll put some resources that uh, yes. will be helpful if uh, you're a truth seeker. Yes. Um, some books, some really awesome books mm -hmm. and references that will help you on uh, your, your faith yeah. journey here. Should we close with this um, verse here? I like this verse. Yes. Here. Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 11 through, verses 11 through 13. Um, Jesus, or God, uh, basically says uh, to us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. That's our prayer for you guys, that uh, those who have not yet heard the gospel of Jesus, um, mm -hmm. hopefully this has served as hopefully a good introduction, yeah. um, that you would go and seek it out. Yeah, and you know, if you guys have any questions at all, either leave them in the comments or you could message us personally and we'd be happy to answer your mm -hmm. questions. I mean, you know, we're not theologians, we're not... <laughs> You know, we're just we're just believers that are that are digging a little bit deeper, and uh, we hope that you guys uh, found this video really helpful for you. So, um, Phew, this was challenging. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> hey, I think that the gospel, the truth, has to be declared, yeah. and uh, this is the only way that it, it, it will spread and that people will hear. Yes. All right, guys. So thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. See you later.